Lumbee English may have been influenced by a number of different groups, beginning with the very first English-speaking colonist in the area. The earliest English colonist landed on the Outer Banks in the late 1500s. Scholars once speculated that the Lumbee were descendants of the Lost Colony, the group of English settlers who vanished from Roanoke Island around 1587. There's no doubt about it, there are a lot of similarities between Outer Banks English and Lumbee English. For example, the pronunciation of words like tide as toyed, you can hear among older people in Prospect, and you can also hear on the Outer Banks. Also, words like mamek and toten are found in both places, and then you hear grammatical constructions such as I weren't there in the Outer Banks and also in Lumbee English. But it's a stretch to say that this proves that there's a connection between Lumbee English and Lost Colony English. What is probably more likely is the fact that there was an earlier English that because of isolation fueled the English that developed in the Outer Banks and Lumbee English as well. While the English colonies gradually migrated inland, the movement of Scottish settlers up the Cape Fear River and into the Robeson County area was another likely influence on the development of Lumbee English. A third possible influence came from Scots-Irish settlers who migrated south down the Appalachian mountain range and east into the Piedmont. From these diverse sources of English, the Lumbee carved out the unique dialect that today is strongly associated with Lumbee culture. And a farm, big farm, 15 acres of tobacco. Mm -hmm. I got well, I couldn't get no help much from the tobacco I quit it. And I got mad and sold my little lot mid off of my little farm and I went and went down the street. Language is very important. Um, as I talked to the reporter the other day, she said, Well why is language so important? Why is there such why does this need to be protected? I said, Well that's how we recognize who we are. You know, not only by looking at someone um, we notice who we are by our language. You recognize someone is from Spain because they speak Spanish or from France because they speak French. I said, and that's how we recognize Lumbees. If we're anywhere in the country and hear ourselves speak, we know exactly who we are. It's like an immediate identification mechanism. Can I talk to this person? Can I trust this person? Do we share common experiences? Do we have a common bond? Even if somebody had been away for years, there's something that lingers about their language that if he talks long enough, you pick it up. Lumbee English distinguishes itself through vocabulary, pronunciation, and grammar. One of the most obvious features of Lumbee English is vocabulary. And a cup of Alec is actually shook coffee with sugar in it, you know. So it's like a sweet cup of coffee, a cup of Alec. Rod, bring me a cup of that alec here. I need, I want yeah, some alec. <laughs> Juvember. Okay, that's, uh, some folks call them a slingshot, but it's just uh, uh, what we would uh, take a, a forked branch, and cut it off, put rubber bands on it, tongue of the shoe, yeah. and make a little rock in it. But that's a juvember. That's all I ever heard until I got grown and found out they'd call them slingshots or something else, you know. But that ju that's what a juvember is. Well, to me, when your mama something, you like, um, you just treat it bad. You like just mess over it. You know, you you make a mess of it. You mummaging up them clothes? You better get all that dirt out of me, not mama come up. And a totem is um, like a an omen of something bad that's going to happen, or or, or a sign of death. You can see a totem, or you can hear a totem. Many Lumbee terms are largely unknown outside of Robeson County. Toten is yes, to carry. Juvember. Yeah, yeah, Juvember. What's that? Yeah, that's, that's when you have a cold snap in July. That's Juvember. Alec? Name of a person? <laughs> that's what it sounds like to me. Mommy? Not for me with that one. Mommy can uh, trying to act like their mama. Now, people around here, you know, non-Indians around here, you know, they're used to it. They're part of, their ancestors are part of the reason our ancestors thought the way we did. But you get anywhere away from this immediate area, people, some, 
they 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 know it's different. They know it's something they've never heard before, and and a lot of times they're fascinated by it because it's you know it's something different. Little Buster Brian eating laid back now. <laughs> what do you, you got that? Chicken and rice and rice and chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Set you down side of your good wife here. I want to try to look after fixing him a meal and a doing for him. In high school, we took grammar. You know, of course, everybody takes grammar in English. And, and, and a lot of the words we use, we were discouraged from using them yeah. because it wasn't proper English according to, to the grammar. We'd always heard um, teachers that would come in outside the community would really downgrade yeah. uh, the, the words that we would use. It's not proper. And you would be punished in certain cases. 